G'day guys, Luke Yedgel here. Uh, going to talk about understanding fat. It's been demonised for many, many years and I think it's really important that as a collective, I suppose, a collective group of PTs from all over Australia, that we fully understand this and we can educate our clients on it in layman's terms as well, because it's really important that we do. Um, if you go to page five, the bottom of page five, this is where you'll find the start of the understanding fat component. Now, the first fat that I suppose that we need to best get our head around is saturated fat. Now, if we go back to the 1950s, a gentleman by the name of Ansel Keys completed what was known as the, the seven country study. Now, his hypothesis here in his study, which he fraudulently proposed was that an increase in saturated fat raised your serum cholesterol levels, which increased your mortality of death by cardiovascular disease. What we now know is that study was fraudulent and it wasn't just a seven country study, it was a 22 country study. Now you can obviously go to Google and type in Ansel Keys and, and find this information, but I want to relay it from my study as well. So essentially after, I suppose, late 1960s, he got the, he got the okay by the USDA to actually put forward this study. And what it showed was that with that increase of saturated fats, there would be an increase of cholesterol and there would be a, an issue with your heart. The mortality would go up. Hence, after the 1970s, we were told that fat was bad and we should cut it out. From there, if we go to any graphs from the 1970s onwards, and I encourage you to do the research yourself, you'll notice that an increase in carbohydrates was prevalent, especially when the 1992 food pyramid came out. But by then it was too late. Fat had been demonized, we were told to eat less, and instead replaced with carbohydrates. Our rates of disease, mortality, in terms of actually uh, diabetes, obesity, uh, heart disease, cancer, they all went through the roof. Now, it's important that we understand what is saturated fat and the individual fats following this as well. So what is a saturated fat? So saturated fats are found in things like milk, um, or, your, or your cheeses, or your animal meats, your coconut oil, that's your saturated fat. And saturated, all it basically means is that it's saturated with hydrogen ions. That's all saturated fat actually means. Okay, what we do know is that a saturated fat, a monounsaturated fat, and a polyunsaturated fat, the only difference here is their carbon chains. Okay, whether they have a double bond or not. Now, saturated fat does not have a double bond, which means that it is very, very highly unreactive to oxygen. Okay, it does not react that well to oxygen. So basically it's more stable under heat, it's very uh, anti-inflammatory in the body, and it helps lowers, lowers your LDL cholesterol pattern B, which is important to understand. Okay, this is a very, very important slide, and it's probably my most passionate to speak about is fat. Okay. Monounsaturated fat, so things like avocado, your nuts, olive oil, monounsaturated fat has been prevalent for many, many years. And again, the only difference here between our saturated and monounsaturated is in its actual definition, mono. Mono means one. Now when it comes down to a fat, we can see that there's one double bond in this chain. Now the more double bonds you find in a chain, the more reactive it is to oxygen. The more reactive it is to oxygen, the more damage and free radical exposure can be brought about to a cell. And that's how cancers are formed, by the destruction of your cell with an inability to repair itself. Basically, monounsaturated fats, quite stable, but again with the double bond, under high temperature and heat, aren't so great. Polyunsaturated fat. Now, we do need polyunsaturated fats in our diet. We do need it for your eye health, and we do need it for your inflammation response when you stub your toe, for example. We need to accelerate this immune response to fight that infection. And this is where your polyunsaturated fats come in. But the problem here is that with a reduction in saturated fat, we've seen an increase in the polyunsaturated fat. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, basically it means that with poly, 
which means many, you get more double bonds. The more double bonds you find in a chain of a fat, the more reactive it is to oxygen. Just think of it like a firecracker. Essentially, it's a firecracker going off in your cell. The more firecrackers, the more inflammation, the more problems that we have. Essentially, this is found in all your vegetable oils. It's found in all the commercial shelf life oils are primarily a polyunsaturated fat, which are already rancid by the time they hit the shelf because of their process of hydrogenation, which increases their rancidity and obviously their ability to cause inflammation in the body. Do we want to eat them? Yes, we do, but only a small amount. So things like salmon will contain your polyunsaturated fats, the healthy omega-3s. Seeds and nuts, flaxseed oil, those sort of things, they'll also contain your polyunsaturated fats. But we want to only consume them in moderate doses and small amounts. In anything in excess will be toxic, but again, we want to minimise our polyunsaturated fat consumption. Basically, if we take anything away from understanding the fats, is that what determines your, I suppose, reactive fat, or how stable it is, is the amount of double bonds bound in a chain. Mono means one, poly means many, okay? When cooking, let's have a look. When is it, what are the oils which are safest for cooking? Now, if we understand what I spoke about before, is that a saturated fat has no double bonds, which means it's not very reactive to oxygen. Knowing that, it's very safe inside our body, okay? So what does this mean? We want to cook with things like coconut oil, grass-fed butter, ghee, lard, duck fat, macadamia oil, rice bran oil, and coconut butter. These are some of our more important fats and oils to cook with. Now, I like to give the, the understanding that if you look back in time, when your great-grandmother or great-great-grandmother was around, there was only this. This was it. There was no commercially laden vegetable oils, nothing like that. This is what we lived off and this is what we ate off for thousands upon thousands of years. These are your best and safest oils. Why? Because they're primarily a saturated fat, they have no double bonds, and they're stable under heat because they don't react to oxygen. Does that make sense? What important roles does dietary fat play in the body? Really important to understand that every macronutrient has a different role. And fat is primarily there to make hormones and immune cells, essentially our sex hormones as well. They're all made by fats. Your testosterone, your progesterone, you know, your pregnenolone, estrogen, they're all bound and made by fats. If you lower your fat consumption on the basis that eating fat makes you fat, there's a high likelihood that your sex drive and libido will lower, okay? room enough to increase your fat yourself and make sure your clients are doing the same. It protects your nerves and your cells and your body. It transports the essential vitamins A, D, E and K. So when you eat a piece of greens or you eat something which is high in fibre and vitamins and minerals, your best tip there is to consume it with a fat source. Why? Because it will help transport these vitamins A, D, E and K to where they need to go. It converts carotene to vitamin A. It's essential for mineral absorption. Here's this word again, insulin. It helps reduce the insulin response. Okay, really important for blood sugar management and again for fat loss purposes. It keeps us fuller for longer. Fat takes a lot of time to break down. Now in saying that, it means that for us to utilize that fat source, we need a lot more energy to break this down. Really important to understand when we're looking to minimize those sugar cravings that we get and we see a lot in this society. It's anti-inflammatory and improves gut health. One of the funny things is that saturated fats are anti-inflammatory, okay? Anti-inflammatory. We've been told that they cause heart disease, but we also know that they're there to promote and protect us. And it's a protective mechanism, okay? Really, really important to understand.